I don't know about you guys, if you guys have been watching Formula One either a long time ago, previous years, or literally this year, or last year at least, or whatever, have you guys noticed that this season not only has been great, but also even the boring tracks have been awesome as well. You know, like tracks like Paul Ricard, boring track, but I heard like the racing was good. I didn't, like I saw like the beginning of it because I had to work that race. Um, Hungary, one of my least favorite tracks. I thought it was going to be a boring race, but guess what? Hungary is one of the best races I've seen this year in Formula One. And here we are Sochi, of course, one of the worst tracks in Formula One. And to be honest, it wasn't like a great race or spectacular race. Like, it was good. But out of all the Sochi races, this race is the best Sochi race for the Russian Grand Prix when it comes to Sochi. And that's saying something. So, yay, congrats Sochi for being a good race. Um... So yeah, what is going on, E Nation fans? This is the Perez 48 here. Welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. This is the 59th edition of this series, and I'm surprised that I do make this series, to be honest, if you want my two cents. Anyway, um, where do I begin? So, there was drama throughout the weekend because rain was going to be a factor it was a factor for the Formula 3 races and Formula 2. One of the Formula 2 races got canceled uh, because of rain, heavy rain, thunderstorms, and all that. And coming into like Formula 1 associated with rain, a lot of people were getting PTSD, post-spot traumatic disorder, because of what happened with Spa when we had like um, the shortest Formula 1 in history. Uh, was Spa when literally it was raining. There was like four laps on track and that's about it. The shortest Formula 1 race in history. Although it was not a race, it was kind of a race. I don't know. You guys debate on that. But, yeah. But, turns out it was not going to be like Spa. We did get qualifying underway. And I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to qualifying in a rain this year, wow, it just shakes up the grid. Like Lando Norris on the pole. George Russell starting great. Where, where did he start? Second? Third? I forgot, to be honest. But George Russell has been qualifying good in the rain in a Williams car. And I don't know. Carlos Sainz started second. Like, what is this? What is going on? But that's, that's nothing yet. We haven't even got to, to the race so yeah, Lando Norris started on the pole, first ever career pole, and and it was just like another good momentum for McLaren after my all-time favorite driver, Dan Ricardo, won at Monza, my second favorite driver, Lando Norris, finished second. Um, I think Ricardo started fifth? I don't remember. So anyway, we get to the race, um, we run away, Carlos signs. Lost the uh, lost some momentum, trying to get the lead, and then he gained the lead. Like honestly, to be honest, as soon as Signs got the lead, I was like, "Oh shit, Lando's not gonna win because Sochi, you can't pass. Sochi is painfully difficult to pass, or something like that. It's not a good track." Um. Not a lot happened. There were some like passes and all that. And to be honest, the only the one of the good things about this race is that there were no stupid team orders crap. Because whenever I watch like the uh, Sochi Grand Prix, there's always team orders crap. Like I made a rant video about that back in 2018, and I did like re-upload it because it was found. Um. I ranted about Team Motors from Mercedes. 2019, there was like another Team Motors moment. I forgot what team. I don't know if it was like Ferrari or Mercedes again. 2020, it was a Renault. And guess what? No Team Motors in this race. So it was like pretty, pretty decent race. And then shit got interesting 
real quick because on the closing laps rain was coming it was coming but we don't know when and like during the closing laps i think like somewhere around the 40s um drivers uh pitted for wet tires and all that like they know the rain was coming so they were gonna get rid of slicks put on wet tires and all that and man we were gonna have like another crazy crazy last laps of a four in the one race because of rain happening nearly at the end of the race it was getting real it was getting real meanwhile lando norris he was leading um i think hamilton was second or somewhere somewhere i know like he was about to get the lead so what happened was uh like lando norris and mclaren i know there was like communication about like like whether the pit or not maybe apparently they didn't know too much about the weather mercedes did i don't know again i'm not a reviewer i'm just some motorsports fanatic talking about the race just to put it out there that's the point of the series so Landon Norris didn't want to pit. He wanted to stay out. And as soon as I heard he said no to pitting, as a Norris fan, my second favorite driver, I was like, oh, crap, this is not going to be good. This is, I do not have a good feeling about this. And then Hamilton pitted. And then, wow, I was so nervous for Lando. And the rain kept coming down. It kept coming down. It got even worse for Lando because he was on slicks. He didn't pit. He was loose. He was losing a lot of momentum. Hamilton was catching with with wets, and then, and then Hamilton caught him. And then I think it was before or after Lewis passed Lando. Lando lost it. Like he didn't spin, spin, but he spun, kind of. And. And to be honest, to be honest, I don't recall being so mad over a Formula One race, but I was actually pissed. I was livid. It was in the morning uh, from where I lived, so I couldn't like yell or scream or like get mad mad. So I was like slamming my ankle, slamming my bed and all that. I was pissed. I was pissed because he choked that hard. I was so pissed. I don't remember being so pissed over a Formula One race. If you want my truth. I was livid. I, it, it hurts. But I was mainly pissed. That Lando lost the race like that. He choked it. I'll get to that in a moment. And then like after that. Lewis Hamilton after getting the lead. Finally. Finally. Got his 100th. Career Formula One win. Lewis Hamilton, who surpassed Michael Schumacher for the most wins last year, and after getting a record tying seventh championship with Schumi, is finally, he finally won a hundred Formula One races. Like, nobody thought that was possible. Nobody thought it was possible. Nobody even thought that passing Schumacher for the all-time wins list was possible. Hamilton did that. And it was bound to happen for Lewis to get 100 wins. Like, some people think, oh, it's easy for Lewis to win races. And to be honest, you're not a race car driver. You don't know. It may look easy, but to be honest, it's not. If you want to win races, you got to be, like, perfect. You got to have good strategies, good pick calls, good everything. Perfect. Just make it to the end. To win the race. That's been Lewis's career. When it comes to winning races and championships. And being dominant. Although I was mad about Lando losing. I was. I try to be happy for Lewis. It's not because I hate Lewis Hamilton. I respect the hell out of Lewis. He He's like one of the greatest drivers of all time in Formula 1. And I gotta say. A big respect for Lewis. Like. Say what you want about Lewis. I don't care if you like or hate Lewis Hamilton. I don't care. Let's just appreciate the fact that he keeps breaking records. Like the polls. The wins. All that. Now all he has to do. Is to get 8 Formula 1 road championships. And then like. 
I think he's on top of everything. I could be wrong. But, oh my god, say what you want about Lewis, but he's a fucking legend. I don't care what people say about Lewis. He's a fucking legend. I respect the hell out of Lewis. I'm very happy for Lewis for reaching 100 wins in Formula 1. And I'm forever grateful to witness that. And to witness Lewis's accomplishments. Like, I don't care, like... I don't care what people say about domination and all that. Like, oh, I, oh domination stinks up the sport. Oh, it's boring and all that. Yeah, I get it. I can understand why people don't like it. But to me, when it comes to domination, I like it because it could break records and all that. And one day when we look back at it, we're going to be like, wow. Like, think about how much some people didn't like seeing Michael Schumacher win races left and right. Guess what? Looking back at it, he's, he's a GOAT. He's a legend. I have a good feelings giving the same thing for Lewis, too. Like, let's just appreciate that we, that we witnessed something historical. Okay? I don't think we'll see anybody uh, break records like Lewis did. Like, I don't think anybody can surpass Lewis Hamilton for wins, polls, podiums, or even championships. Who knows? I could be wrong. But as of today... Lewis Hamilton just he just made history by winning 100 races 21 wins with McLaren 79 wins with Mercedes that's incredible he's very talented just amazing I'm forever grateful to witness something historical again so that's what made me happy I saw something historical now back to Lando Although I was living and mad that he choked it, deep down after the race, it still hurts. But I know Lando Norris will learn from this. Lando will learn from this. He's young. He's very talented. He's got a bright future ahead in Formula One. He will win races. Like He's got a bunch of podiums so far at a young age. And I think McLaren will do better next year as well. Because I think this is the first year back with Mercedes power. And let's see how they do with the 2022 car regulations next year. Lando's got a long way to go. He will learn from his mistakes. And Lando will win races. And I will be happy if Lando wins races. I'm so it hurts yesterday. It still hurts. But I can't wait to see Lando Norris win a race. And win races. It's coming. Lando Norris winning his first Formula One race will come. Mark my words. I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know if it's this year. I don't know if it's next year. But it's going to happen. Hear me out. If Daniel Ricciardo can win in McLaren... So can Lando Norris. And I can't wait to see Lando win and be happy. It's going to be a redemption win. So yeah. Regardless, it was another good Formula 1 race. Man, like this season has been fantastic. I'm loving it. And it was amazing. Max finished second. Carlos Sainz finished third. So Ferrari gets another podium. That's good. And then, like, I remember, like, Pierre Gasly spun. I forgot. I think someone took him out. I'm not really sure who. I don't know if he spun. I know he finished 13th. And then Lance Stroll and Sebastian Vettel make contact. So, yeah, uh, that's a teammate moment. What the hell's going on with Lance Stroll? Because, like, for, like, 2017 through last year, he was, like, improving, improving, improving. And all of a sudden, struggling. Maybe it's because, it's, like... It's Aston Martin's first year. They're still learning and all that. But, damn. Lance Drew has been pretty re- re- reckless. Sorry about that. I accidentally turned off my phone. And I think that covers everything about the 2021 Russian Grand Prix as Sochi. Uh, next race, we're going to Turkey once again. Hell yes. Love Turkey. And it's going to be less than two weeks. 
man, the fight's still going on for championship between Lewis Hamilton and, and Max Verstappen. There's going to be more surprises. Formula One has been so unpredictable, and it's amazing. And it's beautiful to see Formula One grow in the U.S. You'll love to see it. Man, I'm excited for the, for the next... For the next seven races. I can't wait. Uh, I think that covers everything. Before I go, one more thing I will say. Shout out to Nikita Maspin. Because I know he was with, like, kids with disabilities. And was with a kid with a disability. I could be wrong. I know he's with, like, kids and all that. And from the looks of it, I think Maspin um, has improved as a human being so far and if that's the case I really hope he continues to improve yeah I know he's kind of like ridiculous on track but at the same time Haas has been general because Mick has been struggling too so it can't just be um, uh, Nikita bad and all that it's just Haas so yeah again shout out to Maspin for changing for the better hopefully I really hope that's the case I believe if he keeps going to the right way, I think people will respect him again. But all he needs to do is, is to just not be stupid on and off the track. That's it. So yeah, I think that covers everything. Don't think I forgot something else to say. Um, I think that's it for now. I just can't wait for the next race. Turkey, let's go. So what do you guys think about the Sochi Grand Prix, or the, the Russian Grand Prix at Sochi and all that? Um, feel free to tell me in the comments below about your opinions and all that, because that's what comments are for. Please be respectful of the comments, too. I would talk to City, please. Anyway, this is the Impressive 4 Day signing off. Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube notifications for more content. Thank you guys so much for supporting Ian Nation. Uh, hopefully I can do like racing topics with Ian Perez when I just put videos over my commentary instead of just doing this. I really want to improve uh, this series. I really do. I've been lazy. Like I've done like videos over my commentary like the <coughs> the Bristol, one of the Bristol races. So yeah, let's see what I can do. I just need to stop being a lazy POS. So anyway, thank you guys so much for supporting E Nation. This is the Impress 48 signing off. Get in there, Lewis. 100 wins. And Lando will win. He will redeem. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching and listening. This is the Impress 48 signing off. Goodbye, everybody.